So this is really the subject he uh, header. And to walk you through, GCC is a Gulf Cooperation Council. And GCC by nature is when you think of a wealthy Arabs, like when you think of uh, Arabic people, like uh, a, a gentleman wears a white kandura, a lady wears like a black abaya and hijab. If you are thinking about those Arabic people and if you think they're wealthy, they're probably from uh, GCC. So like uh, these countries, they produce tremendous amount of wealth through oil. And they have done that. Uh, Saudi alone accounts about 17 to 20%, if not more, of a global oil supply. UAE also has a global 10% of the oil supply. So whenever I pay for my oil gas, uh, about 10% goes to the UAE each time. So the, these countries have been uh, flourishing through oil, but now, but now after almost uh, 80 years of a dependence on oil, they're finally ready to thrive and actually build the fourth wave of a revolution, which is uh, done by tech. So the first revolution actually started with the trade, even before the oil. Because of the, so because of the uh, central uh, geography, like uh, it, they have always served as a bridge between Africa and the Middle East, India and Europe. And so there was a lot of a uh, trade happening. In the past, it actually was pearl, spice, even the, the people like uh, went through this. So GCC, as you can see, is really at the uh, critical crux of a lot of the population. And you can see that through the figures. I told you Korea and GCC is about 10 hours max in one way about eight hours if you're coming from GCC to Korea. But if you think about India and Pakistan, Pakistan, 220 million population. India, 1.4 billion population, literally one hour to one hour and a half away. So it's really, really close. If you want to go to Africa, which Chinese, US people are really focusing on as the, uh, as the future generation of our infrastructure, it's literally a few hours away. Egypt is about three hours. Kenya is about six hours away. So if you look at this, uh, one of the key figures that any technology companies, especially fintech, e-commerce, delivery companies, one of the key KPIs they look at is the smartphone penetration. So if you look at the smartphone penetration, UAE is one of the GCC, Saudi, they are quite high. Korea, obviously, we're one of the world leader, but like uh, we're on top, uh, with the, on par with the Korea. And also the e-commerce size, and I wanted to highlight this figure so I actually heard different uh, reports on the Korea e-commerce that they're about 100 to 100 billion dollars industry. If you look at the MENA, if you look at the MENA, literally in three years, we have become 10x. And yes, again, if you look at each country, they are still way smaller than Korea. But if you look at the GCC and the MENA, like uh, we're actually way, way higher compared to Korea. And this is only, this is only gonna grow, right? Because so many countries are just starting to flourish. Here, uh, the reason I say it's only gonna grow is we believe that the uh, GCC, because of a high internet and smartphone penetration, GCC consumers, their average order value is actually much higher than the US by about 70% compared to other emerging economies where multiples higher. And because we know how much we wanna spend on uh, physical like uh, e-commerce transactions, like we believe that uh, e-commerce should be way higher in terms of a GDP. And this sector, like Korea, has been flourishing for the last uh, about five to seven years. And one of the key examples was Souk, which is Amazon-like of the Middle East, was bought by Amazon. And the Karim, which is Uber-like in the Middle East, was bought by Uber. So like, we do have a very flourishing the tech ecosystem. And here, again, one of the key things we look at as a fintech, because we should also invest in fintech, and Korea is a very strong on fintech. We care a lot about how much is there like uh, not developed, and this we're not developed at all yet because we're just starting to focus on fintech, and we find a lot of uh, uh, live uh, events. So UAE, uh, there are just uh, so many, frankly, innovation projects going on. One of the ideas is really on this renewable energy. So because uh, so UAE actually has uh, quite a several emirates. So they all used to be tribes. On tr those tribes gathered together and formed the UAE. This is why United Arab Emirates. There are seven different emirates. And Abu Dhabi, which is the capital city, capital like a country of, uh, of within, a capital city within the UAE, has tremendous amount of oil. But Dubai, which a lot of Koreans think of as a UAE, there has been no oil since like early 2000. 
like literally no oil. But where they thrive because of that is the, techno the technology, finances, the, the marketing team, all the large corporates in the Middle East have a base as a Middle East, uh, as a UAE. Right. Uh, Bahrain, so Bahrain used to be actually the financial hub for the Middle East before uh, UAE. Because Bahrain is very tiny compared to UAE. Their Bahrain is about 2 million population, also significantly less oil than UAE. UAE is 10 million. Saudi is about 40. I think official record is 35, but uh, from what I understand, it's about 40. So because Bahrain, they had to innovate. They had to compete with other GCC and other Middle East countries. They were extremely forward-looking on the, on the fintech, especially on the financial hub, and that still permeates throughout the day. So many Korean companies, especially fintech, when they reach out to the expand to the Middle East, they normally think of Bahrain as the first, and also Bahrain people are exceptionally good at that. And for any audience, I will share my email at the end. If you have any questions on how to get access to this market, because today I wanted to keep it more, more on the high level in general, but I would love to give more one-on-one -on -one exercise on each one of these countries. It is a different, uh, let's say, a know-how. In Egypt, just uh, one thing I wanted to highlight is that because Egypt is poor, uh, it is uh, relatively poorer than other uh, countries. Company like Uber here, a Kakao Taxi, they need to, they don't really do well. So they have their own, uh, also like uh, Uber, like called Holland, that the tuk tuk, you know, in, like, um, I don't know in, how to say it in Korean, like almost like a uh, sebaki uh, type of uh, taxi. There is Uber for tax, Uber for that type of uh, tuk tuks, and they really are crushing it. Uh, just wanted to give you one small example. Another uh, focus area for the Middle East is the food security. So I think it's not a rocket science. Because of COVID, globally, there is a demand for food security. But uh, in the Middle East, uh, let's say UAE, because for, the, for six months of the year, it is so hot, so humid, that we cannot locally produce any like a vegetable. So local farms like a not the fancy smart house farms or greenhouse gas farms, local farms shut down completely for six months of the year. So if you think about it, they don't produce six months, and we as uh, consumers, Middle East has, because they had wealth, we've always been consumption-driven globally, and we import about 70 to 80% of our fresh produce, like vegetables, extra from Europe. If they are good quality, then they're high price from Europe. If they're relatively lower quality, then they're cheaper price from Africa. But we have always been importing. And now with COVID, and also frankly just a few years ago, people started to think, how come we cannot produce our own vegetables and fruits if we have the technology? So one of the companies called Pure Harvest, they actually uh, produce more than 15 tons of tomatoes a week in, in Abu Dhabi at the desert. Because they adopted the technology from Netherlands, they, uh, they produce uh, the world-class tomatoes, they're expanding to many different varieties like strawberries, and they're really uh, crushing it. And all these firms have been well capitalized by the Abu Dhabi Sovereign Initiative to focus on the food security. Saudi Arabia is going through the similar initiative, and they are going to be, uh, frankly, a bit more uh, a bit more massive than the UAE just because of the sheer population and the market size. So with, with the, that Middle East on a high level, again, the punchline here are GCC and the rest of the Middle East are distinctly different. So when we think of a Middle East, I, I, uh, I would like to start encouraging all of us to, be, uh, to know what are the constituents of the Middle East. What are the different uh, culture and the behavior of a Middle East? Because it's just not, uh, it's not like a one EU-ish. The World Knowledge Forum.